Great. So hi, everyone. I'm Jen. Thanks for joining us. This event is how to get started as a Web3 developer, and it is part of the Developer Growth Summit 2022. I want to give some quick instructions. We're using Zoom webinar, and it's completely normal if you can't see other attendees. However, know that many of you are present, as you have seen in the chat. Um, so feel free to interact through chat. And make sure, again, to just set chat to send to everyone. And since it's default, oh, sorry. You will also notice a Q&A feature on the toolbar on the bottom. If you have time, just check it out real quick. This is where you'll be asking questions during the talk. And you can also upvote and comment on other people's questions. The speaker will get to your questions at the end. And last but not least, please follow our code of conduct so we can all have a good experience. The link to it is in the chat. Now I want to introduce Julian, our speaker for this event. Julian is the CEO and founder of Eat the Blocks. As a software developer who landed in crypto, Julian teaches Web3 at his online coding school, Eat the Blocks, while creating YouTube content for his extensive community. Without further ado, Julian, please take it away. Hi, guys. Hi, hi, hi. So today we're going to talk of Web3 and how you can get started in the industry. So I'm going to share my screen first. Um, all right. So Web3 is a true revolution and it's really going to change the world. And now is really a great time to get into it. There is a ton of VC money in the space, a ton of projects which are hiring. And because the demand for developers exceed the supply, salaries for Web3 developers are really above the salaries for web developers. For example, as a junior, you can make $100,000 per year. And as a senior, you can go up to $200,000, $300,000 per year. And at, at one time, I even saw a salary of $1 million per year, completely insane. So in this talk, I will go over the main concept of Web3, the technical skills required in Web3. And I will give you some tips to find Web3 jobs. And at the end, we will have a Q&A. Um, so quick intro about me. So I'm Julian from France and I live in Taiwan. I used to work in finance and in 2014, I switched to software development. And in 2017, I became addicted to crypto. And I never recovered since that time. So I worked for many companies in the Web3 space. And when I started at, at that time, there wasn't many resources to learn Web3 development. So that's why I created it, the blogs, which is a YouTube channel and a coding school for Web3 development. And five years later, after 600 videos, we reached 7 million views, 118,000 subscribers, and we have 10,000 students in our coding school. And so today I run it, the blogs full-time with my with a small team. Um, so um first we are going to dive into the key concept of web3 um so we're going to talk briefly about blockchain so you can see blockchain as a special kind of decentralized database so this is an immutable database decentralized and impossible to hack at the protocol level and it's important to separate the blockchain technology from its applications. So Bitcoin introduced the blockchain technology in 2009. And at that time, Bitcoin leveraged the blockchain technology to create a digital currency that um, <clears throat> um, and in 2015, there was another project called Ethereum um, that was introduced in the space. And so like Bitcoin, Ethereum is a cryptocurrency. Um, but beside this, Ethereum also allowed to create application on top of the blockchain. And this is what made blockchain so powerful. So today, when you hear about blockchain development, it can mean two different things. And it's very important to understand. First, it can mean when you work on the blockchain software itself, like Ethereum or Bitcoin, that's what we call blockchain core development. And when you hear blockchain development, it can also mean another thing. It can mean when you build applications on top of the blockchain. So in this case, we talk of blockchain app development. And in most cases, when you hear blockchain development, that's what it means. Um, you also hear the term Web3 development. So Web3 development and blockchain app development, it means the same thing. It means you build on top of the blockchain. So 
that's it for the high level concept in Web3. And now we are going to dive into the technical skills that you require to become a Web3 developer. So it's very important to understand that before you dive into Web3, you need to already know the basics of web development because Web3 is built on top of web technologies. So um, you need to learn this before you start with Web3. And more specifically, you need to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, and Node.js. And you also need to know a front-end framework to build application on the blockchain. And I recommend React. Um, and once you feel comfortable building simple web application, then you can continue to Web3. So next, we are going to talk of decentralized applications. So a decentralized application or a DAP um, is an app that you build on top of a blockchain. Once you deploy it, nobody can stop it. Nobody can censor it, even big corporations or governments. Um, it also has some disadvantages. For example, it's more slow, it's more expensive than a normal application, uh, but the technology is still new, so it's going to improve a lot. Um, so there are already thousands of dApps available today, uh, mainly on Ethereum, but also on other blockchains. And most of these dApps falls into two categories, DeFi and NFTs. DeFi means decentralized finance, and so for example, we have Uniswap where you can buy and sell tokens in a decentralized way. There is no KYC necessary. And with Compound, another DeFi app, you can borrow and lend tokens. And for NFT, that means non-fungible token. This is a way to create unique digital assets on the blockchain. Um, so if you want to see an example of an NFT app, you can check out OpenSea, which is a marketplace for NFTs where people can buy and sell NFTs in a decentralized way. Um, and if you want to see even more DAP, you can check out a website called DAP Radar. Um, so you will notice one thing when you check out decentralized application for the first time, they really look and feel like a web application. And that's because for a large part, it's what they are, but not only. So let's see what is the architecture of a DAP. So, at the bottom, you have a blockchain like Ethereum, and this is not really part of a DAP, but it's the infrastructure on which a DAP is built. Um, then we have the spot contract. So uh, spot contract, this is a small program that lives on the blockchain, and this is really the most critical part of a DAP. This is where you put your most important data, everything about ownership, everything that should be decentralized must be in the spot contract. And on top of it, you, uh, you have a web or a mobile application for the front end. And this is to let users easily interact with the smart contract. Because otherwise, um, you can still interact with the smart contract without a front end, but you need a command line. So it's not really ideal for a user. Um, so by using this front end interface, users are able to read and modify the data of a smart contract. So reading data is more simple. But modifying data is a little bit more complex. Um, for these users have to sign, have to send a signed data package that we call a transaction. And to send this data package, they need to use a wallet. So wallet is a software that is hosted on the client side. And the wallet has the private key of the user, which is like the equivalent of a password for the Web3 world. The private key is associated to the user address, which is like a username for Web3. It identifies users. With this private key, users will be able to create transactions to modify the data on the blockchain. So you can see a transaction like a post HTTP request in the Web2 world. And one very important detail is that a wallet is completely separated from the front end of a DAP. Um, so a DAP interact with the wallet, but never have access to the private key, which is inside the wallet, because otherwise it would be a huge security hole. Um, and another important detail is that even though a decentralized application is decentralized, the front end is actually not decentralized. It's served from a back end, which can be controlled by governments and big companies, but anybody can create another front end to interact with a smart contract 
that is deployed on the blockchain. This is really permissionless. Um, so ADAPT, as you can see, this is 90% a standard web application with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and optionally a front-end framework like React. Um, so I told you before that you have to know the basics of web development before you dive into Web3 development. Well, now you start to understand why. Um, so now we understand what is a decentralized application, what is its architecture, so we can move on. Um, all right, so there are so many blockchains. So uh, on CoinMarketCap, you can see more than almost 20,000 cryptocurrencies. So if you want to be a Web3 developer, which blockchain you have to learn? Um, so I'm going to save you a lot of time. There is one blockchain that really matters, and it's Ethereum. So I know that this is a very sensitive topic because in crypto, everybody has their favorite crypto. Uh, but that's not the point here. I'm not an Ethereum maximalist. I'm just being very practical. I'm talking from the point of view of a developer who wants to get a job in the industry. So most of the job market for Ethereum, for uh, most of the job market in Web3 is for Ethereum. Um, so that's the ultimate argument why you should be focused on Ethereum. But why is that? Well, Ethereum was, uh, was one of the first called second generation blockchain, which is capable of running applications on top of it. So it has the first mover advantage. And thanks to this, Ethereum was able to attract a huge community of users, of developers, of investors. And now you have this huge network effect, exactly like once Facebook reached a critical size, it was very difficult for other projects like MySpace to catch up. So Ethereum has reached this size. Um, so now, having said all of this in crypto, Beside Ethereum, there are many other blockchains. For example, we have Polygon, we have Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, et cetera. But here is the important part. Most of these other blockchains are based on the technology of Ethereum. By doing this, they can leverage the pool of developers who already know Ethereum uh, and the pool of users who already use the tools of Ethereum, like MetaMask. Um, and finally, you will hear people telling you that Ethereum is not scalable, contrary to many other blockchain, and you shouldn't use Ethereum. But a lot of these Ethereum competitors sacrifice decentralization for scalability. So they cannot really be considered true blockchain. So really, um, Ethereum is one of the very few blockchain that is developing a scalable, secure, and decentralized blockchain. Uh, and they're going to be this future update of Ethereum called Ethereum 2.0. Um, so really, Ethereum is the, the real thing, and you have to focus on that. But what do you have to know about Ethereum exactly? Um, so there's a good news and a bad news. So the bad news is that Ethereum is pretty complex. But the good news is that you don't have to know everything about Ethereum. So here we are talking of how we can become a Web3 developer, which will build something on top of the blockchain, but we are not trying to become a blockchain core developer. Um, so thanks to this, you don't need to dive too deep in the Ethereum protocol. So as a Web3 developer, you need to know the Ethereum protocol, but you don't need really to dive too deep and to know the implementation. Um, and and uh, yeah, so that's something very important to understand. Um, so now let's dive a little bit deeper in the detail. So the Ethereum protocol is based on the blockchain technology. Um, and so you need to start to learn how blockchain work. And so for that, there is a great book from Andreas Antonopoulos, which is called Mastering, <clears throat> sorry, Mastering Bitcoin. That's the one I read in 2017 when I got into blockchain and that really, really helped me to understand how the blockchain work. Um, and after that, you need to continue with what is specific to Ethereum. So on Ethereum, uh, we have addresses that basically act like identifier. Uh, so you need to understand how addresses are generated, uh, which data is associated to each address, like the ether balance. Um, and you also need to know what is the data structure of the Ethereum blockchain. It's a little bit more complex than Bitcoin because uh, this is not just a cryptocurrency, but we also have smart contract. And 
once you understand the basics of Ethereum, next, you need to understand what is a smart contract. So smart contract, this is a small program that runs on the Ethereum blockchain. And it's really what makes Ethereum so special. Um, another related concept is the EVM. So EVM stands for the Ethereum Virtual Machine. And that's the part of Ethereum that runs smart contracts. So as a Web3 developer, you want to understand how the EVM executes smart contract. Um, and by the way, this concept of EVM is important because when you hear about all the blockchain, uh, the one that are based on Ethereum, we say that they are EVM based. So when you see a blockchain that is EVM based, that means if you know Ethereum, you can uh, develop application on top of it. Um, you also need to understand the API of Ethereum. So uh, it, it, Ethereum has a JSON RPC API that allow you to interact with it and uh, especially to interact with spot contract. There are two endpoints to interact with spot contract, an endpoint to read data and an endpoint to modify data. So I encourage you to check the documentation, the documentation of the JSON RPC API of Ethereum for these endpoints to uh, understand what parameters are required. Um, and so related to these two endpoints is the concept of a transaction. So a transaction, this is basically a signed data package to modify the state of the Ethereum blockchain. And it's used to execute smart contracts and also to transfer ether between addresses. So you need to know what are the different fields of a transaction. And once you know this, it's time to move on to decentralized application. So I already mentioned decentralized application um, before. So the most important part of your decentralized application is the smart contract. Um, and usually they're quite small, a few hundred, uh, hundred line of code and rarely more. So these small program are different from normal program. Um, once they are deployed, you cannot change their code. So we say that the code of a smart contract is immutable. Uh, however, the data of a smart contract is not immutable. You can change it. So contrary to a normal program, it actually costs money to change the data of a smart contract. And the more complex the code of a smart contract, the more costly it will be. So we try to simplify the code of smart contract to lower the execution cost. That's what we call gas optimization. And it also takes time to change the data of a smart contract because you need for the transaction to be mined, which takes about 15 seconds on Ethereum. Um, and another specificity of a spot contract is that with a spot contract, you can move money natively. Um, so you don't need to do any integration, for example, with the PayPal API or Stripe API. This is a built-in capability and that really makes this smart contract so powerful. Um, so, uh, another difference between a normal program and a smart contract is that in terms of security, so it's almost impossible to hack the core Ethereum protocol. So that means if a transaction is sent to move money from an address to another one, it's impossible to hack this transaction and to change the recipient address. However, it's possible to have a bug in the code of a smart contract and in the past, hackers took advantage of this many times. So when you hear about blockchain hack, usually this is a smart contract hack. And, and then we're going to talk about the programming language for smart contracts. So there are a couple of programming language, but the most popular one is called Solid. So that's the one you need to learn if you want to become a Web3 developer. So the syntax of Solidity looks very similar to JavaScript. But this is just on the surface. Actually, Solidity is very different. So for example, in Solidity, you have to declare the types of your variable, which is not the case in JavaScript. You also have to do some memory management in Solidity. Um, you also in Solidity, this is much more limited compared to JavaScript. That's why we avoid to do complicated things in Solidity. Um, and a great way to experiment with Solidity is to use the remix IDE, so this is an online IDE for Solidity. You have nothing to install. You just load the website and you can start writing and running Solidity smart contracts right away. So Remix is good to get started, but in a real life project, really, uh, we usually use something a little bit more robust. Um, 
And like, for example, Truffle or Hot Hot. So these are the smart contract frameworks, uh, Node.js frameworks. So you can install them with NPM. So um, Hot Hot these days is a little bit more popular than Truffle, but as a Web3 developer, you need to know both. Um, and <clears throat> and uh, once, once you once you know how to use this smart contract framework, um, in order to test your your smart contract to develop them, you will need to use what we call a local blockchain that is completely isolated from the real production network. So both Hat Hat and Truffle have some built-in local blockchain, um, and they are really great if you want to uh, to develop. Um, so. Next, um, the next step is to learn how you can test your smart contract, um, because once you deploy smart contract, you cannot update its code. So if there is a bug, this is a big issue. So before you deploy it, you really want to make sure that everything is working fine. And you do this with testing. And um, another very important aspect of, uh, of smart contract is security, because we manipulate money. And if we have a bug in our smart contract, we can lose the money of our users. So you really have to get good at security if you want to be a Web3 developer. Um, and then uh, there are a couple of libraries that uh, you can use with Solidity, especially a library called OpenZipLink. So that's a library that allow you to do uh, to have some standard implementation of uh, yes twenty and yes seven twenty one. So these are uh, two uh, token standard that we use a lot in Web three, um, and and so yeah. So so you will need to learn a little bit how to manipulate uh, Open Zippling, um, and. And besides, so I mentioned local development network uh, when you do some uh, local development, but you also have what we call public test net. So these are public blockchain network that are a little bit more realistic when you want to test your application, but they are still not the real mainnet network. And so in the development cycle, first we develop locally, then we develop to, we push to test net, and finally we push to uh, mainnet when everything is working fine. Um, so in terms of tools, uh, a, another kind of tool you would need to use is called a faucet. So that allow you to get some testnet ether. So when you, uh, when you deploy your application on a public testnet, you need some testnet ether and you can get, get some from, for, for free by using this, uh, this faucet. Um, another tool you will need is called Etherscan. So Etherscan is what we call a blockchain explorer. And this basically allows you to understand what's going on on the blockchain. And you can verify that a transaction was mined on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, and another tool you need to use is Infura. So when you connect to a public testnet or to mainnet, you need to run your own Ethereum node, but it's not easy because you need a very powerful machine. So in practice, most Web3 developer, we don't do this. Instead, we use an API service for this. So Infura is one of the most famous one, but you have others like QuickNode, Alchemy, uh, and Morales. And for all of these services, all you have to do is to create a free account, and then you have uh, an API key, and then you can interact with the, the mainnet uh, Ethereum network. Um, and once, uh, once you know how to develop a smart contract, the next step is to, is to develop a front end for your smart contract so that you can get a full decentralized application. Um, so the front end can be a mobile app or a web app. In most cases, it's a web app. Um, so uh, uh, this front end is 90% similar to web, web application with HTML, CSS, JavaScript and maybe a front-end framework like React. Uh, but on top of this, there will be two challenges that are more well, specific to the blockchain. So you need to integrate with the blockchain. Um, and you also need to integrate with the wallet, which usually will be uh, MetaMask, which is a, a Chrome extension. So for the integration with the blockchain, there are two libraries that you can use. There is web3.js and uh, ethers.js. So these days, ethers.js is getting more popular, uh, but you probably need to, do, to know both as a web3 developer. And for the integration with the wallet, um, 
it's up to you to decide which wallet you want to support, but at least you should support MetaMask, which is really the most popular wallet for, uh, for Ethereum. And so this is a Chrome extension and uh, most users in crypto uh, know MetaMask. Um, okay, so, so that's so basically for, to build this front end, you can really leverage a lot of your existing web development skills. So that's really, you will have a lot of added value as a web developer. Um, Okay, so that's it for the different tech skills that you need to know in order to become a Web3 developer. And so now we're gonna move on to the tips to find a job. So before you even start to apply to job, you need to know three things. Uh, you need to do three things. So first, you need to learn Web3 development, of course, with YouTube or courses and boot camps. Uh, then you need to define what is your positioning uh, in crypto, NFT, DeFi, etc. I will talk more about it just after. And you need to build an online profile. So you need to have a, a nice GitHub with a nice portfolio. Uh, if possible, you can start to do some blogging. Uh, make sure your LinkedIn profile is updated. Uh, and uh, make sure uh, you are active on Twitter also. So it's going to help you a lot. Um, so let's talk more about your positioning. There are a couple of ways you can do this. First, you can become a spot contract security specialist. So that's what really pay the highest salaries for senior position. It can go up to $300,000 per year. I even saw one time, I saw an insane salary of $1 million for a security specialist. So it's really, really insane. Um, and another way you can specialize is in DeFi, uh, also called decentralized finance. Um, and another way you can specialize is with a NFT, non-fungible token. Um, so this was used a lot to create digital art. Um, and, and so this is really one of the big other use cases of blockchain. Um, so once you've defined a positioning and you have your portfolio ready, your online profile already, um, how do you find a job? So of course, uh, the most simple is to just apply to a job description. And for that, you can go to a, a job board. Um, I recommend a job board, which is called Crypto Job List, which is a job board specialized in Web3 jobs. Um, and there are many other job boards specialized in crypto, but that one is really uh, one of the best and one of the oldest ones. Um, then you can get in touch with professional recruiters. Uh, generally, they prefer to work with senior profiles. So if you junior, uh, recruiters can be a waste of your time. Um, and then a great way to find a job is to do some networking. And for that, uh, so of course, you can attend the conferences and meetups. So now we still, we are st we still have uh, some COVID. So I'm not sure exactly uh, how conferences are going, but I guess so at some point this year, it's going to come back. Um, then you have a uh, discord community so a lot of uh, of twitter of um, of crypto is on in different uh, discord community you have uh a, a, and especially you have what we call DAOs, so DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations so these are these are uh, web3 communities and uh, there is one especially which is called developer dao um which is great for web3 developer um then you can do some networking also by being active on Twitter. So crypto, the crypto world is very, very active on Twitter. Um, then uh, then if, you, if you are active with your blog, also it's a good way to get some incoming leads, you know, if you establish yourself as an expert, so that, that really pays off. And if you are still struggling with finding a full-time job, then maybe something a little bit more simple would be to do freelancing. Um, Usually, it's much more simple to uh, find a freelance gig. It allows you to add a, a paid work uh, on your resume, and that's very useful. And for that, in the past, I've used Code Mentor, um, and that was that was very useful. Um, so that's it for my tips on how to find jobs in Web3. Uh, now I'd like to do, before we move on to the Q&A, um, I just want to do a quick shout out to my Web3 Bootcamp. So uh, at my company, The Blocks, we run a six months program to become a professional Web3 developer. So there is a three months bootcamp where we teach you the technical skills. And there is another three months coaching where we help you to get a job. So if you are interested to know more, I put the link to the program in the chat. And if you want to, you're interested, you can apply to the bootcamp and there is a, another link. Um, okay, so now we are ready to move on to the Q&A. 
Thank you so much, Julian. Um, and I'm going to ask my co-host to just spotlight both of us so it doesn't look like I'm a talking ghost. <laughs> Great, thank you. That was a really great talk for anyone who's interested in crypto and want to venture from Web 2 into Web 3. Now we have some uh, questions and some of you have already put them in the QA, but feel free to keep adding them. And once again, a lot of people have asked if there are slideshows. Um, Julian, would you be able to provide some simple kind of documentation for the kind of uh, tools and the, the websites you've listed uh, uh, during this talk that we can share with others? Yeah, yeah, I, I'll do this after, yeah, but I don't have, it, have them now, yeah. Yeah, no worries, that's totally fine. So everyone, if you're you're confused or not sure about what tools you should be using or what platforms you should be on, don't worry. Um, we'll gather that from Julian and send it to you all afterwards with the recording. So without further ado, let's jump into the first question. And this is from Vince, who has been very great in helping us uh, just kind of throwing different things that Julian has has talked about in the chat. Um, so the first question is, it's really the same development stack as a front-end dev. How does that lead to salaries that are more than double that of a going rate for a front-end dev? <laughs> yeah, so basically uh, because you are a uh, Web3 project, have more money in general. Uh, so that's, that's one reason. Um, and then the integration with a um, with a smart contract is a little bit more complex. So that's also a justification, but just a general reason there is just more money in crypto. Okay, gotcha. So that was answered. Hopefully um, everyone sees that and you can venture into it without quitting your job in, in Web2. Um, and a second question is anonymous attendee as a web developer with a significant amount of experience with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. How do I take my first step towards Web3 development? Is there equivalent of Hello World or To Do List app? Yeah, so actually on my YouTube channel, you uh, a couple of weeks ago I did a live stream uh, where we built a To Do app, so you, you can check this out. Um, another simple kind of app you can do is a uh, uh, a voting app. Uh, you can also try to do a DAO. So you have a couple of uh, simple projects. Um, and another way you can um, um, vent, um, you can get started is to try to build a front end, but without deploying your own smart contract, you can just build a front end for a smart contract that already exists. So this way you, uh, you avoid all the solidity parts and it's a, a great way to get started. Sounds good. Thank you for that. Um, and then we have a question from Daphne. Apart from EVM, what are some of the virtual machines we can use for smart contract? The virtual machine, I think you mean the, the local development blockchain? Yes, um, yes. Uh, yeah, so there is one. The, the one that is compatible with uh, Truffle is called Ganache. And if you use Hot Hat, uh, it's built in. It's called Hot Hat Network. Gotcha. Great. And then we have two more questions, one from John um, and the second from Vineshwar. I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. So the first one from John is, could you provide some exa examples of what data a smart contract would have that is mutable? Um, any, any variable that is uh, in a smart contract, if there is a function that can change it, then, then you can change it. So. Uh, I think you want to look into the different data types that you have in 3 t So you have an integer, you have strings, then you can have a, a arrays, a mapping, et cetera. But, but potentially every variable that you define in a smart contract, you can change it. Great. Um, and the next question and the last question. So if anyone else has questions, we still have about 10 minutes or about eight to nine minutes. So if you have other questions, please feel free to put them in. The next question is from uh, Vineshwar. Can you recommend any book to learn Web3 development for self-study, apart from um, the one you mentioned about Bitcoin? <laughs> no, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with, with books. I, I, I know that a couple of years ago, there, there were a lot released, but a lot of them are not up to date. So no, sorry, I, I cannot help with this, but no, Mastering Bitcoin. Uh, oh, no, no, no. There is another one. Uh, Mastering Bitcoin of Andreas and Plus and Mastering Ethereum from the, the same author. Um, so it doesn't really teach you how to build apps, but it's more about the core Ethereum protocol. Okay, great. 
And then we just got another one in from Steven, which I think will be a great chance for you to talk about your boot camp a little bit again. Um, so Steven said, can you please help point out a comprehensive tutorial on Web3? Uh, comprehensive tutorial? Okay, so I you, you can check out on my YouTube channel, you know, I have more like more than 600 videos. So so you will, you will find a, a lot of stuff there. Um, and yeah, if you want a, something even more comprehensive, then you can check the, the curriculum of my bootcamp, which, uh, which is super, super comprehensive, really covers everything, DeFi, NFT, advanced security, uh, uh, security, really everything. Okay, great. I think that's our last question. Does anyone have any other questions? Okay, just a quick question for you, um, um, Julian. So for people who are not Web2 developers, if they would like to join your bootcamp, would that be possible or would they have to be familiar with, um, with Web2 first? They would need at least to be software developers. Uh, if they are total beginner, I would say it's, it, it will probably be a little bit too difficult because we're not gonna go over the basics, but if they're already software developer and they feel like they can learn web development quickly, I do have uh, a quick training I can give them so they can get in touch with me and uh, we can make it work, yeah. Okay, sounds good. All right, well, we're gonna wrap up the event here, but I before you guys leave, I have a few announcements. So please just stay with me for a little bit. Um, so before that, actually, Julian, do you have any final thoughts or encouragement that you'd like to give everyone? Yeah, a last thought is that, Getting into Web3 is not just about learning the tech stuff, but it's also a whole culture. It's not like learning another JavaScript framework. It's really bigger. And a lot of developers in the space are really passionate about Web3 and, and how you can change the world. So I really invite you to also dive in, into the culture. And yeah, it's going to be a really exciting adventure. Great. Thank you so much for that. Um, so that will wrap up our, our event for today. And just a quick reminder, we have a sw swag giveaway going. So we encourage you to share any learnings, questions from this session on social and be sure to tag us and um, to tag Julian and to use the hashtag DGS2022. We'll be picking some of you out to send swags to. So don't forget to, if you learn anything, you can even just share some of the live tweets that we've done. Um, that, that will just help you enter into the giveaway. And then also, if you'd like to be a speaker of your own event in the future and share experience with fellow developers, please check out the Code Mentor events homepage. All the links are in the chat. And then as you know, there will be more events coming up after this. The next event will actually start in about an hour. And this webinar room will be open for another five minutes with some information showing. So our next event will be future of JavaScript debugging, debugs and dynamic program analysis. So again, this room will stay open for another five minutes. If you have questions that you want to throw into Q&A um, for Julian to answer to let us know.